Hello everyone, my name is Marisha and today's topic is Jesus drunk wine. And lose I point that out. A lot of people like love to say that when it comes to drinking, when it comes to well act excess drinking for pleasure and just just um what's that what's the word? What's the word? I forgot the word for it. But the people just like to do it casually or just for fun, just to drink, to be drunk, on drunkenness, it makes them feel good. Or as Psalms would put it, oh, because of their because of their sorrow, their excuse me, because of their sorrows and all the hardship in life they go through, so they drink unto drunkenness. They drink wine. They drink spirits unto a point where they don't have to feel those things anymore. And the word of God says, like, how a king should not drink. Do not, a king shouldn't drink that way. I leave it to the poor, leave it to the common folk to do so. But as Christians, remember, the Lord is calling his people to be higher. Remember, he's, he's calling us to be the chosen generation, the chosen generation, but kill the people, priests and kings. High priest and kings. He's calling us to live as he is. Dainty, royal, royalty of order, of government, of authority and power and righteousness and holiness. So since God is calling you and I to this level that's beyond this life, that's beyond this world, holiness, heaven on earth, the mindset, you cannot be drunk. You cannot be drunk. What do I mean? You cannot be drunk with this world. You cannot be excessive in this world. And again, the people who say, like, oh, Jesus drunk wine, as in, like, Jesus did it, it's not that bad. So they use an excuse to keep doing it excessively in the wrong, with the wrong motives and the wrong heart behind it. Or they would say, well, Jesus sat with sinners, but he wasn't like a sinner. And those sinners he did sit with, because remember when the Pharisees confronted him because of it, what did he tell other people? He told them, well, those who are not sick, they don't need a physician. But those who are sick, they need a physician. They need help. So for them to understand, like, well, I sit with these people because they're sick. They have a need. They're, they're, of course, they're in sin. They're in a horrible condition. This could bring death eternally. But they're sitting with me. They're, with, they're eating with me to learn what I'm saying, so they can no, so they can no longer be sick, so they can no longer be a sinner. They want it to become righteous, but on the other hand, them they're not. They I'm not sick, but you're full of sin, you're full of pride. But I, I'm of the learned. I know God. I know God. I got God in my heart. We're Abraham's son. I think it was today. I've been in church since this happened. When what's it? Benny Church ice cream. I forgot the. Evangelist name. I was since um Billy. Oh, Billy Hen, Benny Hen. I listen, Benny Hen. I know. I I go way back. I go way back. Before he got a divorce, before this happened to him, he went through this era. Oh, oh, oh! I go way back. And this I remember this used to be a guy. He's watching CBN TV. I forgot which, which Christian network it was. It was the plus size guy. He had thick glasses and brown hair, Caucasian. My dad used to watch him. I used to watch him. I knew. I knew. With the, cause the logo is basically the two lions with the, I think it was a shield and like a light would come and a lady with the wild blonde hair and then they'll come and talk and say things like, yeah, since then, like, you don't see, you even know what I'm talking about. I, 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 I was here in those days. Billy Graham, that's the other guy I wanted to say. I was here since these people, these evangelists. I, I, you, you, you don't know my day. You, 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 you in the macro generation. Oh, you, you, you in the fashion. You don't my day, my day. Yeah, back in your day when you were I actually said, but now time's going back. You begin to compromise. Why? Because you're drunken with the world. It's hell of what you're saying. You know, love is love. You, you people gotta change. You know, this is the new. This is just the new normal. Like grandma, auntie, uncle. Pastor, why are you talking like the news? Your language should be of the Lord. Why do you sound like those who are afraid? Those who are afraid 
to get sick and they're telling you not to go to church and they're telling you to do everything to do everything else in life but not go to church why do you sound like them why do you sound like the world why do you sound fearful why do you sound prideful firstly why are you preaching to the woman how they should control their man because we're not just the meat to be used around we're not just a trophy like why woman why are you saying this teaching the woman in your congregation to do this and encourage them to wear the fake hair and the fake nails and the harlot clothing to get what you want and to control the relationship to show who wears the pants because it wasn't for me you wouldn't have these children and have this, this pleasure or have food on your table so why are you teaching women how to be a witch you know, why, why is the youth minister teaching the youth to be worldly it's okay to be worldly but play video games have pajama night and you know, oh, I, I'm wearing my pajamas. I know what to wear. Yes, and the girl's going to come with no undergarments on. And the guy's going to come just free. You know, it's we just chilling. We chilling, you know, because Jesus is the plug. Like, why are you promoting worldliness in the church? Why are there singles and mingle? Because we, we don't want fornication to come in the church. So we just have this opportunity so singles can engage. We want marriage. We don't want to forbid marriage. You know, in Corinthians, they have problems with fornication. So... You don't want to forbid marriage. We have singles and mingles, you know. Tell me, people, you're making excuses for pleasure. You're making excuses to be drunk, to stay in the drunken condition where you're no longer sober. What do I mean by you're drunk? Yeah, you're full of lust, full of fear, full of pride, full of rebellion, full of perversion, full of compromise, full of confusion. Yeah, because you do not like the righteousness of God. You do not like the holiness of God. So you're going to turn to these things. You're going to promote MTV. You're going to promote Jay. You're going to promote Jay-Z. You're going to promote Keisha Cole. You're going to promote Alicia Keys. You're going to pro- you're going to promote Eminem. You're going to promote Tasha Cobbs. Oh, well, she, you know. Yeah, you're going to promote Snoop Dogg. And you're going to promote Kanye. You're going to pr- promote Beyoncé. And you're going to play their music at your gatherings and in the church. And it's going to be on the on the, on the what's it called? a little the head the, the screen you know when you have the projection screen out you have to you have, you have to alert project on the screen of Beyonce as when you just say yes nobody can say no you, you're gonna promote it and you're gonna and, and the children and the people are gonna dance to it now you don't know why why is this African tribal things going on here like yeah don't you hear the beats it was promoting I remember when I first heard that I was at a gathering and the song started playing. Not the song, but yeah, the song started playing. I just heard the beat, the rhythm. I was like, what is this? Because first I was confronted, like, hey, we, this is a Christian guy. And why are we listening to rolling music? Like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. We at church, we can play the music. So then they changed it. And the song, I'm to this beat. I'm like, wait, what? And then I finally heard it. With Beyonce sang with Michelle and other lady, Kelly. About Jesus say yes, somebody can say no. I'm like, this is the song that all the kids and the people are singing to. They've been singing, and it's where they got it from. And this is the top, and they're blind to not understand what's going on. Like really? No, no, yeah. You're drunk with the world. You're making excuses for sin. But it's how we engage the youth. It's how we keep them in the church. You know, keep them off the streets. Okay, using worldly concepts. Where is the prayer? We have our prayer warriors. You know, they're soldiers. You have them with the army fatigue. Yeah, we have our prayer warriors with the army fatigue. Yeah. We got sisters, we got brothers, we got this. And they in fornication, they're sticking around in homosexuality. And uh, yeah, this is, this is your prayer warrior team. Confusion and perversion. And you wonder why there was a, a spiritual sickness in the church. Why is there. What? What's. Why the young people can't stand you? Why is it so hard? Why is it hard? Because you're making it hard for them to understand what's to, how to be separate from the world. You're bringing the world in the church. That's how you're bringing me this and bay, you know? You got to be a Jew to win the Jews. You got to be the world to win the world. No, you don't. That's not what Paul, Paul preached. Because remember, he got in trouble when he started to act like them. He had to shave his, shave his hair. And he was trying to just do what they did so that he can visualize it and what happened. They end up realizing, hey, this is Paul, the guy. Yeah, I almost killed him, put him in prison. 
But Lord, you know, Lord, he is that still. You knew he was supposed to go. The message, the message, gospel is still preached. Lord, because you suffer in trouble. You have to be separate. You have to be separate. You cannot be like the world and you say you love Jesus. It doesn't make sense. You can't look like the world and you say you love Jesus. Well, I'm a work in progress. God's still working on me. Okay, where still works. Faith without works is dead. I don't see the hand of God. You're not changing the... You're cursing out a person every other minute. You're quoting statistics of math. Not math. Um, sports. And you, all you talk about is what you saw in a movie on Netflix and the next series that came out and the next show and the next trend. I gotta watch this, see this. Like, you don't even know the Bible. I remember going to a, um, a, a retreat at a, for a church gathering. And it's one of those because like, you know every day there's like a service day but it's one of the days there was a service that night or just like those just the you know just about relax and, and just chill and just you know hang out fellowship so we go to the little game room place and you know you have some people singing rushing into hymns you got people playing cards and there's a bar to eat not like drink like like a little snack bar area going on and I'm just in there, just looking. Right now, <laughs> I'm I'm being saved at this point. You know, you just start speculating, you just listening, trying to see, engage, like what where to go, like what 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 can I be, what can I do? So these guys are just talking, and they, I mean, they're talking about basketball because they they're both athletes and they're in high school, college. One is in high school, one is in college, and. He's back from college and he's in high school and he gets to see, he's at, he's at this retreat and they're just talking, talking, talking about basketball and his stats and this, this and that. I was like, hey, y'all. I said, quote, quote a verse from the Bible for me. Don't say John 3, 16. Don't say Philippians 4, 13. Or 16. 4, 13. Do not say, Genesis, I told don't, don't say the basics. Give me something new. And don't quote Psalm 23. Do not quote Psalm 23. You give me some scripture in their minds. Uh, I was like, you see, like how I told them, like, how can you remember stats about people you don't even know and still have a way before, but you can, and then you're, you're a Christian, you can't even, you don't know, you, you don't even know what you believe, you can't even say anything, you don't even know, like, you don't, like, well, do you read the Bible? Basically, trying to say, like, what's going on now? Stop playing around. I remember one time I went to a seminar. And a lady, she, she, she said, she was talking about different denominations. I was, I was part of the Baptist at one point. And this Baptist convention seminary thing for all the Sunday school teachers and the pastors and everybody, the deacons. And I was with the church and ministry. So I'm there listening to the lady. And... She basically tries to part the importance of reading the word and understanding the word. And she said to us, you know what's about these rock people so faithful in the religions? But I'm going to say what she said. I'm going to correct it too. I'm not saying what she said 100% true. But but she said, you know what um, what's causing people to, these real other religions sound more convincing compared to us Christians, like the Adventists, the Jehovah Witness, the Mormons, everybody, she's saying, it's in all of them. Because they study what they, they study and read a lot of what they believe. They do a lot. And us Christians, when, we, when we're, when people ask us, we're, like, our mind is just bombarded. We don't know what to say or know what to do. And since that is true. But think about it. It's not about only reciting scripture. It's knowing who who God it really is like understanding like your relationship to him does really count and matter because if you understand like oh I need God then you know you will cling to the scripture you're gonna cling it's gonna be like oh no this is my this is my life this is who I am I, I need it I need it and when she said that I was like that's I was like that's kind of true yeah because I remember in high school that's like this same time I am in high school I remember on the bus, there was a Muslim kid on the bus, and every single day he had his Quran. Every day he had his Quran. And I remember, and 
college too. I was talking to a one girl, I didn't know she was a witness until we were talking, I was trying to talk about talk to her about the Lord. And she's like, Oh, I love you, Jesus Christ. I was like, oh cool. And then she started talking. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what is this? What's she talking about? And then I realized because she pulled out her phone and said, like, Oh, this, this. I like, watched her. Oh, she just a witness. Yeah, but remember this stuff, it's easy for them to read what they're saying because there's, there's no life in it. It's not real. Well, they used the Bible too. They took word they took words out of it. And we're gonna say, yeah, if you take the words out of his book, he's gonna take it out of his lens the lens book of life. People are doing this stuff and then it's easy to read this stuff. I mean it's so dry and just dead. Like literature, just dead. And people have the audacity to read the Bible as literature. That's not it. It's life. It's alive. The difference between literature and the word of God, God the word of God is living. It's true. It's active. You can read it so many times and always get something different from it. You can read it so many times. And you learn from it differently or you see something differently out of it. Oh, no, it's just your point of view. Your perspective has changed, as you know. You've been in the faith for this much time. Like, no, it's alive. And that's why people get uncomfortable. Because how true and sincere it pieces through the thoughts, the mind, the soul spirit. It goes through you. It, it's going to puncture you. That's why it hurts. And that com- It's got conviction, the guilt. That somebody say something, read something, read something from the Bible, and you hear it like, oh, your body going to adjust. Your heart, mind's going to adjust. Like, this is true. It's sincere. God who created you, this is his word that you're listening to and hearing. So it's going to prick you. It's not a bad thing. That shows you like, hey, this is real. It's alive. Go ahead and read the Quran. Go ahead and read Je- Jehovah on the New World Scriptures, whatever they call it, or the Mormon. Read, read, read the Mormon. I'm not telling myself to read it, but I'm saying there's like no life in it. It's dead. It's nothing. It's nothing. I remember I was taking the Bible literature class in college, and then... I had a, it had a, they gave us the Bible. We had a, a certain Bible. We can't use any Bible because I would bring my Bible. And he's like, no, you can't use that Bible. You need to get the Bible that's on the syllabus. I'm like, okay. So I bought it. And then I thought this came. Go look it up. Go look up this Bible. I'm like, because it had the word in it, but I, I know it's a different translation. And I found out reading a Catholic Bible. I said, oh, Lord. I was so hot. <laughs> I was like, I'm reading a Catholic version of the Bible. I was just, I was hot. I saw some extra books I never heard or never saw in my life. Like, what? And it had Psalm 151. I said, Psalm 151? And I'm, I'm totally guys, I'm happy I understand. Like, I read it. I mean, it was just words. I was, it was just words. Like, words just printed on a sheet of paper. Like, any other novel. Just words. It had, it had nothing. It didn't make no sense. I said it didn't make any sense. It made no sense at all. It was like no value, empty. And that's that's part of being drunk with the world. You're empty. There's so many voices. You're gonna keep getting drunk and drunk and drunk, but it's not solving. It's not helping anything. So yeah, that's what sin does. You do it and do it, but it's not helping you. It's making you worse. You can, you know, if you're a person like to drink a lot, you're destroying your body organs. Your body gonna get dehydrated more. You're gonna have a lot of water, fat. Like the liquid just you get really puffy. You're gonna start breaking damage to your kidneys and your liver. Yeah, it's gonna mess up some brain cells. It's gonna mess you up. But it helps me not think about my past and the trauma and the terror. It helps me, it helps me. It's not, it's killing you. Same as sin, being far from God is killing you. Making excuses to why you do what you do and you justify yourself to do it. It's killing you too. So that's why you can't sit here and say Jesus drunk wine. Jesus sat with sinners. Jesus, he dated Mary Magdalene. Like, where'd you get that from? Got it from Netflix. You got that from National Geographic. You got it from liars. People who hate God already. Yeah. Get from people who hate God. You got it from Family Guy. They hate God. I remember in high school, a kid rebuked me. A kid, my classmate rebuked me from that. I was like, because he's a Christian. He's like, he said, Marie, God, I'll tell him, like, hey, you should watch it. It's not bad, God. So I'm a Christian, too. It's not bad. 
she's all like, no, why would you watch something that picks on their savior? And my mom like, this kid is crazy. Like, it's a funny show. So I kept talking like, well, not everything is bad. I remember when he said that, I remember some episodes how I pick on God or pick on Jesus Christ. I was like, I was like, but since I liked it, I'm like, no, it's not bad. I gave him some of the corny, like the, just the dumb, silly parts of it. Like, it's, it's not that bad. You should watch it. I hope you didn't watch it after I said that. But it's like, man, that's that's true stuff. Now I'm really walking out like, man, that stuff mocked Jesus Christ. They mocked the Lord. These people they hate God. And I'm talking like a lot of television shows, a lot of things you see, entertainment is mocking God. It's saying God is not real. Yeah. And it's telling, and it's making you believe that there's no God. And it said, where God says a fool, it says in heart there's no God. Why did he go for? I have, I have entertainment, I have pleasure. This Christian comedian, it's like, you know, watch something fun. And like, oh, you know, I can watch comedy shows. I can watch a Christian comedy. Yeah, and then this Christian comedy, people mocking people in the, in the house of God. Where does that people in church act? No, it's like fake people, hypocrites act. It's mocking. Like, God will not be mocked, people. Stop playing around. It's not a funny thing to play around and joke about. Well, I can't I can't watch Lifetime, but I could watch Pure Flix, and I could find me a little fix, you know, I need a romance fix, an action fix, or a drama fix, but it's Christian-based, you know, it's Christian. Tell me, people, stop trying to fulfill the lust of the flesh, all right? God is wanting us to be holy and sanctified, but that you're not going to be king, you're not going to be a priest, if you still love the world, you have to be separate. You have to be different. So God's calling people out, out of the world so you can be like him. So you can have like the same language as he has, holiness, righteousness. And so there's judgment and there's wisdom in what you do and what you say. And your words do not hit the ground. I said my words to hit the ground. They did not hit the ground. Yes, it did. When he talked to when he picked out um, the sons of Jacob, not Jacob, Jesse. Well, Lord, a lot of that happened so the brothers know that, hey, I choose David out of everybody. Yes, you look like, you look like the one, but I don't look at the, the heart. I mean, I don't look at the outward appearance. I look at the heart. And the Lord loved David. Like, that's the one. He's an unright to get him. Yeah, good Lord is pleased with David. The Lord chose David before David was even born. Was even born. So with that being said, stop making excuses of sin. Because that's deception. Remember, the Lord will give you up to your lust, your own desires, if you continue deny, if you continually, if you continually deny Him in your actions. So repentance is key. Your mind has to be changed. Your heart has to be changed. No more going back to the old man. God's making us new. And he's strengthening our inner man, our inner spirit man, because we're three-part person, soul, body, spirit. And he is restoring all of us, making us whole, body, soul, and spirit. And I don't need to burn incense. I don't need rocks for energy. I don't need plants. I don't need aromatherapy. I don't need yoga. You don't need meditation. You don't need to go to the western coast to go in Himalayas and then get some... Himalayan salt water, salt pearls, and people. Stop being a witch. Stop being confused. Stop being enticed with the vanity and being drunk with the world. So the Lord's calling people to be high, to go higher. God's calling us to go higher, to be separate, and come out among them, so you can be made whole.